I'm Nancy McNally of Nancy McNally Quilts. Welcome to a Learn, Make, and Create episode of Annie's Creative Studio. Today's topic is Jigsaw Puzzle by Wendy Shepard. Don't forget to download your pattern. If you're not a member of Annie's Creative Studio, you can sign up today and start watching for free. So let's take a look at our Jigsaw Puzzle block. What are we going to work on today? Um, first thing is organization and I'm going to show you how to lay out your pieces for each block so that they look just like puzzle pieces as you see on the pattern. So we're going to work on the stitch and flip method as we organize our shapes. One of the supplies you're going to need is a fabric marking pen because we're going to need to mark the wrong side of our, I believe there, yes, the wrong side of our B fabric squares. Before we begin organizing all of our A, B, and C blocks, we are going to draw a line on the wrong side of our B blocks. So we're going to draw a diagonal line. You're going to do this on all of the B blocks. So just take your ruler and draw a line. And we're going to stitch directly on that line. But before we stitch directly on that line onto another piece of fabric, let's lay out our block pieces. So you can see I already have a green block here. And I have the green rectangles and a green square in the center. Now as you can see, here and here, I have the B squares. That's the stitch and flip method that we're going to use. In this block, it creates a nice illusion of a curve. But pay attention to the fabrics that are in position on either side of the middle square. Notice that this one is the same color as this block, the salmon color. And then this one is a lighter shade. This is how we're going to connect our puzzle pieces. So, and notice this one right here, I have purple and then I have another light. When we go to put our blocks together, once you build the blocks, make sure that before you build the blocks, you take a picture, take a picture with your cell phone. So I've got mine here. So once I get this laid out, I'm going to take a picture of it so that just in case I have to stop and come back to the project later, I will have something to reference to as how I had it laid out. Okay, so let's start our layout. So I have my C and my A squares all together. So notice how this block, the green one, is going up and down and the salmon colored one is going uh, right to left or horizontal. So I'm going to lay out my two rectangles. They're going to go in the opposite direction of the one that it touches. So I'm going to get them matching. Let's pull this down a little bit because I haven't sewn them. I need a little more room. So I'm going to get the matching A square and place it right in the middle. Okay. We're just going to keep building. Now I already have this purple one here. So let's get purple in place. And I'm going to keep building and you follow. Okay, there's my purple center square. Okay, so now let's do a like a teal blue. And put this one. We're going to do our two rectangles. And again, notice they're going, the rectangles are going in the opposite direction of its neighboring block. Put our center in here. And now we're going to do our, this one's like a complementary color to the salmon. It's, it's like the tone on tone when it's the lighter version. And here is our center. Now, here we go. Okay. So let's take a look. I have, whoops, I have this light on top. And that block is right here. So I'm going to place this one right here. And then next, I have this purple on top. This block is purple, so it's going to go in the teal so I can continue the pattern. And now, 
here's my teal block teal it's going to go right here in its neighboring here's the green it's going to go in here here's another light and I don't have that one out yet so I'm going to put it aside and then this one is also going to go to the side I don't have it out yet so I have this color and it needs to go here and then I can put let's say because I don't have it continuing out here let's say let's put this one right here because I want these which are over here move them out of the way I want this fabric to continue down here if I can separate the rectangles there we go so I know I just run out of room here so I know that this one's going to be my next one and I'll put these over here now let's work oh I need to fill in this one right here because I need to make a block you know what let's go with the green because I have green way over here I can put a green one up there oh and I need to do one there so I can also continue the design hmm let's see what color could I use let's just go for the um this one there okay now I've laid it all out so I have my aqua blue or these are teal blue really um, B squares so this is my teal block I want to put the B squares on top of the the purple corner as in this case it's going to be the the neighboring blocks corner and so you're going to repeat that you're going to put two on this one and then we're going to go over here and do the same thing and I haven't drawn my line on the back of these yet okay so now let's pick up I have this color so do you know where these are going to go we're going to take that little fiber off of there <laughs> and it's going to go right here we're going to use the stitch and flip method on these same here let's move these since I don't have all the components ready okay we're going to place these right here again these are going to be the stitch and flip blocks okay keep going all right so now I have purple and these are going to go right here one on each corner and they go on the inside corners of your a blocks that are the wrong color of the main block they're a different color than the main block wrong color is not a good word to use okay so now we're going to do these okay now is when you take the picture before your cat jumps on the table so we would go like this take the picture just like this back up far enough now I have this to reference when I come back <laughs> even though I do put things in a bin <laughs> he still finds them <laughs> okay so now let's pick it up So I have those two together and then I want to take this one and put it here and this one and put it here and this one goes on top and this is one block we're going to put it over to the side and we're going to repeat the process rectangle rectangle oops bring this one over here all right let me get set up so I can teach you how to do the stitch and flip method. Now I have my line drawn on the back side or the wrong side of my B squares and I also pinned them in place. This way I can just zip through it, lickety split, bring my pin cushion over here. So what we're going to do is we are going to sew directly on the drawn line. Now placement is very very important with these notice how I have the lines coming from the center 
down to the other side center. So you're going to have, you're going to go from here to here, and then this one here to here. Okay. Make sure you always have them going in the right direction. Again, we're going to sew directly on the drawn line. Don't sew over your pins. Okay. We're going to drop our needle down and you're going to, I'm going to turn my light off. There we go. I'm going to manually turn my needle just so that I can see where it's landing. It helps with this method because sometimes you can't see because the foot is in the way where your needle is going to land. All right, so I've got mine in the right spot. There we go. I'm going to remove the pin now so I don't sew over it. Okay, and once you do that, you can chain piece these if you would like, but I did mine individually because I was afraid I would just get my colors mixed up. So, see, I sewed directly on that line. Then you're gonna take scissors or your rotary cutter and you're gonna cut a quarter inch away from your stitched line and you can go ahead and remove any excess thread discard that piece and then I'm going to leave this one right here and then you're going to flip this one in place and press it just like that all right I'm going to move this pin this way so that I can remove it the right way in just a second okay now I'm going to sew on that line There we go. Trim away, quarter inch away. And then you're gonna press this one in place. I'm gonna go ahead and sew these two and get them ready so I can press at the same time. Trim away. Now press all of them in place. They're going to look just like that. Now let's lay our block out. place it, the, the right color square, your A square in the middle. The A square has to match your rectangles. And then you place your other A squares, your outer center ones, and make sure the purple is coming inside so it's touching the center square. Okay, so now we're just going to piece the centers together. So we're going to go right sides together, align, and join. Then you're going to press towards your center square. You're going to align the next one, right sides together. And we're going to sew our quarter inch seam allowance. Again, press it towards the center.
All right, our next step is very easy. Put the centerpiece in the, the right order first, and then we're going to join our rectangles, right sides together, top one first, or you can use the bottom one, and then you're gonna, you're gonna go right sides together and sew your quarter inch seam allowance. You're going to press towards the top rectangle. Now we're going to join this one, the, the next one. Okay, next you're going to press your seam allowance towards the rectangle and your first block is done. How cool is that? So, so cool. So this is what they look like. They're nine and a half inches by nine and a half inches unfinished. You're going to make 25 of these blocks. Again, I recommend that you lay them all out so that you can stay organized, lay it out, take the picture and even look at the picture because you know it's very easy to pick up a fabric that you think is supposed to go in say this position because it looks similar or you just forgot whatever but take a picture of it so that when you look at it through the camera your photo you will probably find like an oops i i've done that before <laughs> numerous times actually so you're going to make 25 of these blocks lay it out Take it one step at a time and you will have the cutest jigsaw puzzle block quilt. To help you stay organized, there is a chart on page three of your pattern so that you can keep all your colors in the right place and that you know how many you're supposed to have of each. Okay, isn't it cute? Can you see the puzzle pieces? Aren't they adorable? I just love this pattern. All right, I hope you have enjoyed this Learn, Make, Create episode, Jigsaw Puzzle. And I hope that you will share your photos because now you're able to add project photos to the shared photo gallery on the Annie's Creative Studio website. And if you give one of the episodes that I teach a try. I would love it if I could see it. So go ahead, upload a picture for us so that we can see it. All right, I would really, really enjoy seeing how or what fabrics you use to create these projects or this project. All right, you can find the upload tab below. Now, you can also share your photos on the Annie's Facebook, Pinterest, and Instagram pages. You can join our crafting community. Don't forget to use the hashtag Annie's Catalog. I hope to see you in another episode. Have a wonderful day. 